الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علیہ و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد حبت فی اللہ I wanted to uh, just do maybe a quick, uh, some Masail Minhajiyya, some issues related to Minhaj methodology. And what the methodology we're talking about, we're talking about the methodology of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. And what we mean by that is we're talking about their way in which they articulate da'wah. One of the things when we talk about this kalima or this term uh, minhaj, and I kind of prefer this definition that uh, Sheikh uh, Ahmed al-Najmi, rahmatullahi alayhi, rahmatullahi alayhi, that he mentioned about the concept of minhaj. And when he was talking about minhaj, he was referring to the tariqah da'wah. So this is the way that he distinguished minhaj from aqidah, because some of the scholars, they mention that minhaj is a, a part of aqidah, or that they're the one and the same. And so there's, you know, some ikhtilaf or differences in uh, defining this terminology, but I really felt that Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi's uh, definition <clears throat> was was very um, was comp- comprehensive and easily understood, and I felt that there was a, a a stronger degree of accuracy in how the scholars, especially in contemporary times, how they use this menhaj ahl sunnah. You know, when they, you talk about the menhaj of the salaf, that means we're talking about the methodology of how they how they gave da'wah, how they understood, how they related to Ahl Bid'ah, how did they relate to Ahl Sunnah, to the mistakes of Ahl Sunnah, the mistakes of Ahl Bid'ah. So it's very important because there are so many misconceptions out there about a lot of these terminologies and these concepts and about who Ahl Sunnah is and when someone leaves the Menhaj of the Salaf, what it means to be Salafi, uh, how does that relate to the, to the Salaf Asali? So I just thought, I think we're going to do just a very short um, <clears throat> series right now on my way back to my car on this mountain, and we're going to try to do this together. So the first thing, as far as uh, Menhaj, so again, when we're talking about Menhaj, we're talking about a methodology. We're talking about a way, a, a path, and it's a clear path. And so that's why when you have some individuals they have generally the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah, for example. But they depart in some issues of Menhaj, in some issues of the methodology. For example, they might believe, just like Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah believes about the divine names of attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we affirm what Allah affirms, we negate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates, and likewise what the Prophet sallallahu affirms and negates. That's the Menhaj of Ahl Sunnah. And that has to do with creed and also an aspect of, uh, of methodology. And so when we talk about minhaj, again, this methodology, it's, it's kind of a madhab, a way that Ahl Sunnati will jama'at throughout history that they've traversed a certain path in understanding certain Messiah and how they interact with others with regards to these Messiah. So, for example, you can have people, like in the contemporary times, we have people who are uh, generally Salafi in their Aqidah. You know, they believe in the, the categories of Tawheed. They believe in uh, the same way Ahl Sunnah believes in al asmai wa Sifat. Uh, they believe in, you know, you know, how, you know, about the issue, you know, they share with Ahl Sunnah as far as the issue, in the, understanding the issue of tak- Takfir, for example, you know, that it's based on the book and the Sunnah and, and so on and so forth. But, they might d- deviate in that they have some aspects of Akhwan Muslimin in their menhaj, in their methodology. What that means is that, for example, they might believe those in those aspects of Tawheed, but then they believe very much in strong political activism. And that they believe that that's the strongest way to change uh, a, a, a non-Sharia compliant government. You know, in, in an Islamic country or outside. So they believe in the political parties to get their end results. So, for example, this is a big part of the Qana Muslimin. Uh, I think probably that might clarify this a bit more is, for example, Qana Muslimin, they, uh, they have a concept which is from their usul. And this is Minhajiyya, really. That, uh, and it began with Hassan al Benna. And he believes that he, he believed that the 
that the Islamic groups that they all had good. Okay, so regard Takfir wa Hijra, Akhwan uh, Muslimin, Salafis, um, the various Sufis, uh, Sufi Turk, and that would include Ashiris and Matridiya and um, you know all these variant uh, creeds and sects that they all had good and they all had something to bring to the table. So he developed a qaida, a principle, which is, this is minhajiyah, that it's actually getting cold here. It dropped, it was sunny. Now it's actually getting cold and there's snow. Uh, he developed a qaida, a, a principle, which means that uh, we will unite upon that which we agree upon and we will excuse one another okay this is a principle the scholars of Ahl Sunnah in contemporary times have written and refuted this qaida uh, bid'iyah uh, on various fronts so what you'll find is you'll find some people that they have the aqidah salafiya aqidah Ahl Sunnah tibu jama'ah but with regards to this qaida they will practice that. So they will excuse everyone from a mubtidiyah. They will have no problem with sitting with a grave worshiper or something like this. They won't speak about them. They don't want to speak about their menhaj. They don't want to ever uh, clarify those things, but they just look for numbers. And they look for, uh, they believe rectification will come out by excusing one another so they can sit with any mubtidiyah and they can just unite and go forward uh, in, that, in that respect. So we would say about someone like this, in general, that perhaps they might have the uh, a creed of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, but they have deviated in their methodology. I hope that gives us a little bit of understanding. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. We're going to keep this short.